Hey everybody, it's Jackie with Jackie's Recent Things. Today, we're gonna work on a Unique in the Creek cross. As you can tell, I've already got quite a bit of it done. And the reason I did that um, is it's so repetitive once you get your mesh on that you just kind of, you know, need to see the gist of it. And uh, then you can do it. And there's other things that we're gonna do to this also. But I do wanna show you how I loaded my board. So I'm gonna start on my right hand side and I'm gonna put one zip tie in. I'm gonna close that zip tie up. And what you're gonna have is a total of three zip ties coming across. And then I'm gonna go back into this hole. Make another zip tie. Like so. And I'll hold this up close so you can see. Just like so, you'll have three zip ties going across. So I'm gonna quickly load the other ones. I'll try and keep my hand out of the way this time so you can see. <clears throat> so that's one. Two, that one in wrong. Try that again. Two. Or this one, sorry. Two. Like I said, I'll hold this up close so you can get a really good look. So as you can see, one, two, three, and for some, you need to see what it looks like on the back. This is what it looks like on the back. And then before we really get started, we need to put our zip tie on for hanging. Also, I usually forget to do that, but I don't want to have to fight with that later on. So I remembered this time. Now, when I do these with zip ties, the hangers, I do not cut that off. The reason I don't cut this off is because it becomes a very sharp edge. So I just leave it. So let me show you how I did the mesh for this. Um, value mesh is really, really easy to get. And I wanted to use value mesh because it's really inexpensive. Um, and some of y'all might have Hobby Lobby mesh, Michael's mesh that you're stuck with, and you're like, Jackie, what do you do with it? So this is what we're going to do. So here's your good edge, your good edge. We're going to fold this in thirds. We're going to go one, 
and then we're going to bring this over in thirds like that just like that and then we're going to fold it in half just like that and then we're just going to ruffle it up and put it in the zip tie now some people cut these off i don't so once again, this is your good edge. That's your good edge. We're gonna fold it up, fold it again. So you're in thirds and then fold it in half and then ruffle it up. Now you can use just one color if you want to. I just chose to do a design. So you're gonna fold it in thirds and then fold it in half. All your frayed edges will be sticking out of the zip tie cut those off and then I was alternating color so I'm gonna start with purple and we're gonna fold it in thirds again fold it see I'm folding it over my hand to hold it and these are 10 inch by 10 inch squares Now, I don't know if anybody's ever done a fold like this. I don't, there's so many uh, different unique in the creek things that I would be forever doing research to find out. So I'm sure as much as uh, the creator, Lori Franklin has played with her own boards, I'm sure she's done this before. This is what I was playing with the mesh and just what I decided to do with value mesh. So folding good edge in, good edge in. Fold in half. And I was trying to do something also that was fairly easy to do to hide the fray on value mesh. Um, I don't like using the cutting tools or anything like that because it increases the cost of my product for the amount of time that it takes to cut it, uh, plus the health hazard. So one last row.
Some of y'all might need something to hold the mesh so you can fold it better. This was also something I didn't want to create, something that needed to be uh, perfect in the fold. all the mesh that we add and like I said it takes 60 pieces 60 zip ties if you want to know how you got that there's 12 rows this way four this way four that way uh, for a total of 20 and then there was three rows so that makes the 60 so that's where that math came from now what you might want to do for those of you that might have a hard time finding the hole you might want to cut some of this excess out of the center just so you can get to your center holes like so whatever you need to do but what I have here is I've got a floral block and I prefer to use the floral block for two reasons one, two, one I'm gonna put a bow on here and I'm gonna add florals the floral block is going to help raise the bow up above my poofs. My poofs are kind of high. Let me turn this so you can see it. I don't want my, my bow caving into this. I want it to set up with my uh, floral. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some hot glue to the floral block. As always, when you're using styrofoam and such, just do it on low temp. And I'm going to put a liberal amount on. And don't worry, we're going to use the uh, our bow to finish securing this on. But for right now, we're just going to hot glue it down. out of the way get your favorite bow maker out now and we're gonna make a bow so I'm just gonna grab the bow genius it's here convenient to make my bow I'm gonna grab some white pipe cleaners and just zip them together Now the bow for this does not have to be very big because we want to make sure that we hold the shape of our cross. So we kind of want to make sure that this area, this area, and the corners kind of don't get too covered up. And so the bow is not, like I said, it's not going to need to be very big. If you want to know or get a guess on how to make your bow, uh, how wide to make it, you just kind of measure. You can just, you know, with any of your bow makers, you can say, well, I want a five inch bow or five inch loops, it'll be a 10 inch bow. So I'm adding yellow to this because that's what the color flowers that I'm gonna use. And I'm also gonna kinda take a look, I don't want my ribbon tails to be too overpowering, so they're gonna end up being about six inches and we're going to use five inch loops for this
Easter is one of the most uh, uh, popular times of year that people go out and visit their loved ones in the cemeteries. And they like to take crosses, so that was kind of like the, the theme for the colors that I chose here. That's why I was thinking about spring colors for my cross. And I'm gonna do two loops of my 1.5 because my all my other ribbons are gonna be 1.5 instead of 2.5. Like I said, the bow doesn't need to be humongous. I'm gonna come in with some yellow gingham. Once you get your Unique in the Creek board loaded and everything, it should take you about 45 minutes to do this project from start to finish. I timed myself loading the board and the time that I spent um, off camera putting the mesh in. Once you start folding your mesh and get into a good rhythm, it'll go pretty quick. So I'm just going to do one loop to finish it off. Pull my bow out. When I pull these out, I really squeeze down on this so my ribbon's not so thick. I'm going to give it a good twist. And now I'm going to go down through my holes. And then use, like I said, I was going to use my bow to secure on the floral block along with the glue. So I'm gonna pull that down pretty tight and then I'm gonna flip this over, show you what I do. So with the pipe cleaners using the Unique in the Creek board, I usually just find the nearest hole and poke them back up through that hole. I try not to leave any sharp edges on anything that I do because I don't wanna take a chance on somebody cutting their hand. And now I'm just gonna fluff my bow out. Sometimes with my center uh, loop, 
and bow. I like to take the tail and put it up here to give that one little extra shot of color up toward the top of my bow like that. So now we're going to add the florals and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some short little florals. You could have covered the, the block with some moss. If you wanted to, really, you can't see the block. So you could actually skip this part if you want to. But because my florals aren't going to be that long, I'm just going to use this. This is a little bit of boxwood that you could use for topiaries, wooden topiaries and things like that. I purchased this at Sims Pottery every time I go. So that's just what I'm going to use to, you know, cover that floral block up. So I'm going to go pretty high to the top of the floral block and spread that out so I don't have to use that much. So basically I'm going to put two of these on each side. And my floral block that I used was about two inches by two inches is about the size of what I put in the center. So the other reason I'm not going to add that much is because I have other greenery that's going to be just a little bit longer than I'm going to add also. I just need two more. So I'm cutting these pretty short. And there is no need to use a pick machine or anything like that with this. And of course we'll have to fluff the bow again, but that's okay. So I got my starter greenery in, so now I'm gonna add my longer greenery, which is gonna be more boxwood. So these stems don't need to be that long. So I'll cut them pretty short because we don't have much of, much of a floral block to work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go between the smaller boxwood pieces with uh, the longer ones. So you'll need about eight of the longer pieces as well. So I will go back here in just a little bit and fluff my bow out. But while I'm adding the greenery, it's not necessarily that important. Okay, last piece of greenery. And 
we'll kind of fix our bow so we can see what we're looking at. Like so. So these are my favorite fill filler flower. They're also my favorite smaller flower, but I'm not a big fan of the greenery. So I'm gonna pull the greenery down and out of the way. And I'm gonna cut a few of these off. And I'm gonna cut a pretty long to start with. I'm not measuring to um, actually place them in yet. I'm just cutting right now. I purchased these from Craft Outlet. I believe they also have them available at uh, Sims Pottery and General Wholesale. So once again, we don't want these sticking out too far. We don't want to overpower our cross. Put the flower back on. So I'm going to start here at the top and I'm going to go between my greenery and see, and that's a little bit long. So now I'm going to cut it down. Measure twice, cut once. So I'm going to kind of go in between my bow. I'm going to basically let my greenery stick out just a little bit further than my flower. So kind of be careful with your greenery and such that you don't end up with like an antenna look. See how I did that corner to corner? I am going to add more floral, but I wouldn't just, I wouldn't recommend just leaving that like that. So I'm going to put this one up here just a little bit higher than the two out here. Then I'm gonna come out here to the side. going to do is I'm not going to put my greenery stuff down this way. Mostly because when you deal with florals, you got to keep in mind, um, you know, not all flowers grow upside down. <clears throat> so unless you know that that flower grows upside down, I would not add it in necessarily upside down, if at all possible. So now I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow that I don't like that green ring. So I'm really going to pull it back. That greenery is just a little bit too dark for this project. Um, I pick my greenery and stuff depending on the tone of the project, and this is more of a pastel. So I definitely didn't want to use a darker shade of greenery with my pastel. So 
I didn't realize I cut that many off. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of go between my white flowers and I'm gonna go at a little bit of different height. That way it doesn't like do a circle circle. So I'm gonna have the yellow stick up just a little bit higher as I go between. Sorry about that. I don't mean to slam my glue gun around there, y'all. So basically with the yellow, I went a little bit longer and between my white. I'm stopping right here. That's the plane where I chose to stop with my florals. The last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, once again, my shorter boxwood. Let me finish rustling so you can hear me. I'm gonna take my shorter boxwood and I'm gonna cut it just a little bit longer this time. because all I'm using this for this time is to cover up some of the unsightly stems. So it's not necessarily gonna be sticking out that far. But just like so, I'm just not a big fan of seeing the plastic plastic of artificial stems so that's why I cover them up that's just personally me And I want to say that as you do this tutorial, don't beat yourself up if it doesn't come out looking perfect. Or if you think one of the cross forms, even in the unique and the creek board, it is one of the hardest forms to do something like so over the top. And but just keep in mind, it's you know, it's how the person that is going to purchase it views it because it's for their loved one. So that's what matters most to doing this form is the eye of the beholder basically. So I'm going to separate my ribbon tails out down here a little bit. So that's because I'm not putting the flowers down here so I want to separate these out. because your tails are basically like your ribbon down here. And there y'all have it. This is my take on the Unique in the Creek uh, cross. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope that I created something new, but like I said, uh, Lori, the creator of the Unique in the Creek board, she's done so amazing things and she's constantly playing with the mesh. So she's probably already done this, who knows? I'm sure she'll let me know. Thank y'all for joining me. Bye y'all.